Hello, my name is Ryan Baker, and I'm a technical marketing manager at VMware for the Tanzu Build Service. In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can create a continuous delivery pipeline leveraging the Tanzu Build Service with Azure DevOps and Harbor. This video in the accompanying example code is part of a multi-part series demonstrating how Tanzu Build Service can be integrated with a variety of the most popular continuous deployment and container registry solutions to provide consistent and secure container builds as part of your pipelines. These example pipelines are intended to be primitive in order to provide a similar look and feel across multiple solutions and not a complete continuous delivery pipeline. If desired, these pipelines can be used as a starting point to be adapted based on workflow desired. They intend to emphasize two use cases. The first, triggering an application deployment with a code change. The second, triggering an application deployment with a vulnerability update. Let's take a look at the workflow we are about to demo. Displayed here is the pipeline from the Tanzu Build Service official documentation, and we'll use this as our guide for our pipeline. As mentioned, we're going to demonstrate two workflows. The code change deployment workflow will be triggered by a commit of code into our main branch, noted in this diagram as git branch A. Typically, this would occur as a merge into our main branch from a feature branch where continuous integration tests are run prior to merge, as depicted in the diagram. Once this merge is performed, the CICD tool detects the new code and instructs the Tanzu build service to update the commit SHA configuration on a given image using the kp image save or the kp image patch command. Once triggered, our image is built via the Tanzu build service and pushed to our container registry. From the action of pushing an artifact to our container registry, the CICD tool then triggers the deployment of the new image to a development environment first, then to a production environment after approval. In the vulnerability patching workflow, the trigger for a new build comes from the Tanzu build service itself when a change is detected to a resource for a given image, such as a stack or a build pack update. This is typically done either via manually or automation, or in TBS versions 1.2 and later, this could be performed by the new dependency updater utility. Once the rebuild is complete, Tanzu build service pushes the image to our container registry. As was the case with the code update workflow, the action of pushing a new image to the registry triggers our CICD tooling to deploy the new image to our development and production environments. Now that we've discussed this at a high level, let's look at how we are going to implement this with Azure DevOps and Harbor. Azure DevOps will have two pipelines defined which will work together to deliver the entire workflow. The first pipeline will be responsible for monitoring the source code for a new commit to be merged from a feature branch. Once detected, it will update the Tanzu build service image configuration with the new SHA using the kp image patch command. Once that is complete, Tanzu build service will trigger a new build of the image and push it to our Harbor container registry. In Harbor, we have a webhook configured to notify Azure DevOps that an image push has occurred. The second Azure DevOps pipeline listens for that notification, extracts the digest SHA of the new image, and performs a Helm update to roll the new image out to our Kubernetes cluster. Now, let's hop into Azure DevOps and see these pipelines in action using the Spring Pet Clinic application as our example. Here you can see the two pipelines we previously discussed, which will work together to deploy our sample application to a development and a production environment. Speaking of, let's take a look at those applications which we have previously deployed in our Kubernetes clusters with the latest image. First, the development environment, then the production environment. As expected, they look identical with the exception of a different URL. Let's introduce a simple code change, such as updating the welcome banner from welcome to welcome to the Spring Pet Clinic to see these pipelines in action. Once the change is made, we commit and push the code to our remote GitHub repository. Then Azure DevOps detects that commit and executes the first pipeline. Prior to initiating the build, the pipeline will run any tests that you wish to perform. This step could be omitted if you are satisfied with the tests executed on the pull request prior to merge. For simplicity's sake of the demo, we're simply echoing run CI tests in this task as a placeholder. After the initial test job is completed, several steps will happen in rapid order to configure our deployment environment, which includes downloading the Tanzu Network CLI, authenticating to the Tanzu Network, and then using the authenticated session to download the KPAC CLI. Once KPAC is installed, we'll configure kubectl so that it can authenticate to the Kubernetes cluster that 
Tanzu build service is running on. Once the environment is configured so that we can run kpack commands, we'll execute the kpack image patch command and update the git commit SHA to the SHA of the commit that triggered the pipeline. As you can see, the logs of the entire build will also be available as part of the pipeline, which could be helpful in the event of any troubleshooting that needs to occur. After the build is complete, Tanzu build service pushes the completed image to our harbor registry. Here, we have the webhook configured on the registry project to notify Azure DevOps that an artifact has been pushed, and you can see the trigger invocation from our most recent push. Going back to Azure DevOps, we see that the webhook has already triggered the second pipeline, which is working to update our development environment with the latest image digest, which was extracted from the payload of the webhook invocation. Upon completion of the development environment update, we can review the environment to confirm that our code chain has been deployed. Once validated, we can approve the deployment to our production environment. Now that we've walked through the code update use case, let's take a look at the vulnerability patching use case. Going back to our image, we can see that the image we initially deployed has several vulnerabilities in it. This is because we purposefully used an outdated base OS stack for our container build. Let's go out to the Tanzu network and update our cluster builder to use the latest Ubuntu Bionic stack. If you're using Tanzu build service 1.2 or later, you could also enable the dependency updater functionality, which will continuously keep your stacks and build packs updated with the latest releases. After updating the stack, Tanzu build service will trigger a rebuild and push the image to harbor. Performing a quick scan, we can see that all fixable vulnerabilities have been remediated. As in the first use case, the act of pushing the image artifact to Harbor has triggered the Harbor webhook and invoked the second pipeline to deploy the latest image to both our development and production environments. This allows your environment to stay fully patched with little effort from your operations team. This concludes both the code update and vulnerability patch demonstration using the Tanzu build service, Azure DevOps, and Harbor. Thank you for your time, and if you'd like to learn more, please go to tanzu.vmware.com.